Hey, it's Dry Bear. Now that we have a starter guide for every class in the entire game for Dragonflight, we've started working on individual class guides and build guides for all styles of content. And we just finished our M plus guide for Holy Paladin, so today we're going to be continuing with the raid guide for Holy Paladin. As always, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash Dry Bear. See you there. Now let's talk Holy Paladin in raid as a raid healer. The general overall that you want to know about raid healing in general is that, especially as the group size gets bigger, you start to have three distinct categories of healer and the role that they fill in that group. If you're playing normal and heroic, generally these rules don't really apply because you just need healers to heal. But when things get more and more complicated or more progressive, like you need to progress, you're actually doing progression, these roles matter a lot. The first one is raid healer. A raid healer specializes in healing the whole raid, lots of throughput, lots of AOE. Holy Priest is a big one. Uh, Preservation Evoker is a big one. Restoration Druid is a big one. They're just good at putting out lots of healing overall. Then there are tank healers, healers that are very good at healing tanks. This is usually Holy Paladin is the best at it because of the Beacon of Light system that allows them to always be healing the tank. Uh, Mist Weavers can also specialize in single target healing and really excel at that, but they have to spec into it specifically. And then there's what's called a spot healer. And this is an important distinction because if you're brand new to playing Holy Paladin in raid, you have to remember that you are one of the best spot healers in the entire game. So if you look at a full list of, of people that are dying and all of them are dropping low, a spot healer will be looking for the people that are that drop to near death and to quickly raise those people up out of danger of dying rather than trying to focus on the big HPS. And I think most of the time, if you have an experienced raid leader, they'll be looking for a Holy Paladin for this reason, to fill it in, because Word of Glory, Holy Shock, a really big flash of light or Holy Light can pop someone up, and then they'll be picked up by the raid healers that are putting out all this HPS. And it will help you, especially with some of the modifiers here, if you're doing things that make your Holy, your, your Light of Dawn, increase uh, your Word of Glory. You can get these big, massive, big single target heals. Keep the person alive. Uh, rather than going for the heal meters, you're keeping the raid alive. You're keeping it so that you can actually kill the boss. So just like we did with the Holy Paladin M Plus guide, we'll go over the builds that you have available. Uh, unlike M Plus, there's several builds you can use for raid with some minor, minor modifications in here. And there's also kind of a niche build uh, with Marauds that some people like using. Uh, I don't think it's as good as playing regularly, but it is an option if you like playing with uh, with Light of the Martyr. If you need these builds, I'll have them down in the description. You just copy the import string, uh, import it uh, into your game uh, using this import feature, type in the string that I have in the description, give it a name, and you've got yourself a build. Starting with the class tree on the left, which is available to all Paladin specs, the big things you want to notice here are going to be your auras, which will affect your aura mastery. This is a big cooldown for Holy Paladins. Unfortunately, we did, we never got back the Legion cooldown that made it so that uh, when you heal, it distributes your heal over everyone, which gave Holy Paladins some excellent raid healing. That never came back with Aura Mastery, uh, but we basically do have Devotion Aura. Devotion Aura is your best bet for raids. It does give uh, a damage reduction, and then when you pop up your Aura Mastery, it'll give the maximum damage reduction of 15%. Uh, all the way across everyone in the raid. So it's a huge raid-wide cooldown. You can use it before big AOE goes out. There's some cooldowns on Razageth that are really good for this uh, that really reduce that damage taken. Then you have your Blessings, Blessing of Sacrifice. It's the sh one of the shortest cooldown tank externals in the entire game. Uh, so Sac is really good. You do want Blessing of Sacrifice and you want the uh, Sacrifice of the Just that makes it a one minute cooldown. You can bop. Remember, bop is uh, you target a party member or raid member. It makes them immune to physical damage. You can remove bleeds with this because bleeds are physical damage. Just be careful about bopping paladins because you will give them a debuff that prevents them from using their own shield. And be careful about bopping tanks because you can clear their threat, uh, which can cause all kinds of problems. Um, in here, there's not going to be too much variance. Uh, you can play around uh, with extra divine steeds. Um, you can play around with maybe going over here. And on some fights like Razageth, you may want to pick up your uh, Interrupt and then uh, play with that. But that's really the only fight. And even then, you can just use Hammer of Justice or you can use uh, Blinding Light to interrupt your adds rather than using the Interrupt here. So you shouldn't really need this in a raid encounter. 
But the big thing that you need to know about Holy Paladin in your class tree is going to be down here. We talked about this in the Mythic Plus guide, and you're welcome to go watch that video if you'd like. Uh, but this refers to the Dusk and Dawn buffs. This is relatively new to Paladin over the last couple expansions, um, and it is crucial to your gameplay. If you're brand new to Paladin, you need to be managing this properly. So all this says is that when you reach five Holy Power on your meter, you'll gain the Blessing of Dawn. And when you reach zero Holy Power, you'll gain the Blessing of Dusk. At default, Dawn gives you increased damage and healing, and then your Holy Power spending abilities deal additional increased damage and healing. And then for Dust, it gives you damage reduction and armor, and you get a, a lower cooldown uh, on your generating abilities for Holy Power. And you modify it further with Seal of Order, which makes it do even more damage and healing on Dawn. And then Dust gives you armor and even more cooldown faster. So that's the core of the gameplay. You get uh, Holy Power by using Holy Shock, uh, by healing your Beacon of Light target um, if you're using that. Uh, or your Beacon of Faith target, and then you also get it for Crusader Strike uh, and for Hammer of Wrath. So you can see how I just hit five Holy Power here. I now have the Blessing of Dawn. All of your Holy Power spenders cost three Holy Power. So if I use a spender, I go from five to two, but now I need to get to zero to get the Dusk buff. So I'll use one Builder and then another spender, and now I have the Dusk buff. This is crucial. Every 20 seconds, you need to be hitting five Holy Power, and then zero Holy Power to build up that buff and keep it going. It is a huge contributor to your overall value. Um, and you can decide how you want to do it. There's a, there's a caster build that doesn't really stay in melee all that much. There's a melee build. There's an Inquisitor build. Uh, and there's even uh, the Marauds build if you want to use that as well. But just make sure you're managing this on the side uh, for your Holy Power. Jumping over to the spec tree. Uh, the big thing you want to pick up here is Beacon of Faith. This makes it so you can have two Beacon of Light targets. Uh, in general, you won't really be using Beacon of Virtue. This is an option for uh, M+, plus that gets you to heal four or five targets. Beacon of Faith is just better. Just beacon both the tanks in a raid encounter, and they'll always be getting heals. And if you heal the tank with your casted heals, you'll get extra Holy Power, which is super nice. If you're playing off of that, I would recommend getting Inflorescence as well. This gives you, uh, if you're doing pure caster, which means you're skipping things like Crusader's Might, uh, then you'll be just kind of spending those extra infusions uh, you're using Divine Favor to stack it up and then playing off of Light of Dawn, Word of Glory, popping wings and utilizing it that way. This is probably the most basic build. Uh, I'll have it down in the description. Um, you can also use Holy Light Spending. This one used to be stronger, but still super good. It heals up to five targets within 12 yards for 8% of its healing. So if you are getting some nice procs here, uh, you'll get some extra scaling on it. The Holy Light will do AoE. Though typically, uh, you won't really need this. You won't be spamming this as much as you did when you had this as, I think it was BFA that this came in. Um, but it is there. It's better than having Moment of Compassion. This is your basic starter build for Raid. It, you don't really have to rely on Crusader's Might, so you have to be in melee range. Um, there is a melee build that you'll rely on for uh, Crusader Strike to lower the cooldown on your Holy Shock. Uh, you're staying in melee range as long as you can. Um, and you're just kind of then casting heals using your uh, Resplendent Light consuming your inflorescence, uh, and that's basically it. So the playstyle looks like this. Make sure you have Beacon of Light and Beacon of Faith up on your tank. You'll see it. Uh, I usually have it on a marker here. Uh, I use Voodoo, but you want to make sure you have it there just so you can have it. And then you want to be every 20 seconds stacking up to five Holy Power, uh, spending. You can cast on the tank once, spend again. You get Dusk. Keep these buffs up at all times. Then when there's low to medium damage, you want to be spamming Light of Dawn. Uh, with a good directional. This is a directional uh, a blast that's instant out of your hands there. So when you have it, just make sure you, I usually like to sit near the tanks and then kind of blast it out so it hits the targets. Remember, you do have a mastery bonus of being closer to target heals the more. Usually means uh, being closer to the tank helps a lot. And then you'll just be building that up. Running unending light means that you, as you spend light of dawn, you'll get stacks of unending light, which stacks up to nine stacks. When you have nine stacks, your next uh, word of glory is like insanely strong. So you're just basically using this to get uh, your AOE healing up. And then when someone drops low as a spot healer, like I was mentioning before, then you just throw a huge, massive word of glory on them. Uh, and then you'll be able to play off that. Almost all Paladin builds use Awakening, which means that when you spend your Holy Power on Word of Glory and Light of Dawn, you have a chance to give yourself wings. 
So make sure you're paying attention to that. You don't need to double up with your wings cast, um, that sort of thing. Blessing of Summer is, I think, still very gettable, especially if you're playing caster. It's much better in Mythic Plus, where you have a small number of players, but every fourth Blessing, when you use this ability, it rotates to the next one. Uh, there is still a tank external on this with Blessing of Spring. So every time you use this, it becomes a different one. The cooldown one from Autumn is really useful in Raid. Uh, the damaged ones don't really make that big of a difference it, either way. But then when you get to Spring, it makes it so the target heals more and gets healed more, uh, which is super useful to throw on your tanks. Um, on top of Sacrifice, it gives you those two nice externals if you're planning, um, if you're rotating through the seasons on your Blessing to give that to them often. You have many modifiers in here that affect your, uh, your Holy Shock, which is really important. Um, so you have things that make it so when you consume Infusion, you get the Holy Shock. Remember when you get this and you have a proc of like a crit of your Holy Shock, uh, it'll give you stacks of Infusion of, of Light. If you're running Inflorescence, it'll give you two stacks. And that just can make your casted uh, much easier. And again, I would, I, would, I would enforce the fact that as a Holy Paladin, you're, you're most effective at keeping the tanks alive and spot healing. And if you do that really well, especially with your big unending light procs, you can actually do out heal other healers. Um, but your overall raid will be better if you're not trying to push the meters. You're more just trying to spot heal and tank heal but you, there's no one better than Holy Paladin to do that. Now let's talk about the melee version of this raid build. The left side of it will be the exact same. There's not really many changes you need to play with here. The whole left side of your class tree is really good for this. But keep in mind that if you're playing the melee, which I think if played properly with high, high, high haste, melee Holy Paladin and uh, Inquisitor Holy Paladin do outperform the caster, um, it allows you to maximize your, your mastery as well. If you're dropping things like Divine Favor, you're dropping things like Resplendent Light, and you're dropping things like Inflorescence because you're not going to be consuming those extra uh, infusion charges. But instead, you're going to go th for things like Crusader's Might. Every time you Crusader Strike, it reduces the cooldown of your Holy Shock. You only need one point in this just because you have enough abilities that if you get two points in this, uh, you end up resetting it too fast, and then you have too many globals that you need to spend at once. But it's super nice because then you can Holy Shock, and then go into melee, hit it, hit it, and your Holy Shock's back, you can Holy Shock again, which synergizes excellently with Glimmer of Light. Every time you Holy Shock someone for 30 seconds, they will then get a portion of healing when you Holy Shock another target. So you can have it up to eight targets. You can have this. You can see I have it marked here on my hot icons in the middle of my bar. Um, and then you're just, you remember, when you're playing melee Holy Paladin, stay near the boss, stay near their mobs. Make sure you're keeping Crusader Strike on cooldown. Make sure you're keeping Holy Shock on cooldown and you'll be able to manage that, plus obviously keep your Dust and Dawn up. Then instead of Inflorescence, you'll be picking up Empyrean Legacy. This one is super fun to use, especially uh, when you have things like Unending Light synergizing with it. What this does is every time you throw Judgment, which at default has like a 10 second cooldown, um, when you throw Judgment, your little ranged hammer, your next Word of Glory will automatically activate Light of Dawn with 25% increased effectiveness. So you can throw this out, uh, hit this, and then Word of Glory, and then you'll shoot out a pew pew, which means that you'll consume Unending Light, and then you'll be able to stack up uh, some extra love uh, coming out of that. But it gives you a nice little way to throw out the Judgment, gets you a nice uh, Word of Glory that does AoE. It's really, really cool. So that kind of synergy is there. And then you'll be playing with your Avenging Wrath double stack on these two here, um, and just be using your wings the best you can. Uh, and then you'll just be using Holy Shock, Crusader Strike, Crusader Strike, uh, if you are in wings, you can throw out your Divine Hammer. Uh, that'll give you extra holy power. Make sure you are uh, keeping near the mob so you can melee it as often as possible. Where, the way I'm standing right now is how I usually do play Holy Paladin in Raid, is I'll be looking at the raid, and I'll be near the mob, and I'll be looking at the tanks, and then I'll kind of pop by, do Crusader Strikes in the range, make sure you don't forget it, uh, get all your holy power, and then you want to be like blasting the melee and the range that are close enough, and then uh, dealing with the tanks as they drop lower. Uh, it's also much easier to get Divine Toll to have value. Generally in Raid, Divine Toll is just for stacking up Holy Power and stacking up your Glimmer of Light because it is an area around you. It's kind of hard sometimes to get uh, Divine Toll to proc on everybody, but if you're playing Melee Holy Paladin, the Melee will be next to you and you can get some really nice healing out of Divine Toll. Whereas if you're playing the Caster version, you'll usually just be using it uh, on, more often than not just to get Holy Power and stack up Glimmer. Next, since you're going to be further away from some of the range, and we all know range like to sometimes 
go off into the far reaches of the galaxy far, far away, and they say they have ice block, they're fine, and they're out of range, and you can't get to them. Uh, rule of law is super nice. Big unfortunate here, rule of law used to be way better. So what rule of law does is when you activate it, it increases the range of your heals by 50%. This used to also increase your mastery, which means that when rule of law was active, it would adjust your mastery for the new range, which means that you would get better mastery benefit for someone who is at the same distance. When you pop rule of law, you'll get more mastery. They took that away in Dragonflight, but it's still useful because if someone's way out of range, you're playing melee, you're hitting the boss, and they're too far away, you can pop Rule of Law, throw out a Word of Glory, pop them, get them super high up, uh, get that spot healing going, and then uh, you know stay on the boss without having to get away from it, losing the effectiveness of your Crusader's Might value. And I have been testing this kind of hybridized build here before we talk about Marauds. Um, I'm calling this the Inquisitor build just because of Relentless Inquisitor, but this one has been fun to test in raid environment, um, mostly because, like I said, Blessing of Summer isn't super useful in raid like it is in Mythic Plus. It's really just Blessing of Winter that you're getting value out of, um, and then Autumn a little bit. So you drop Blessing of Summer, you drop Crusader's Might, and then you pick up Relentless Inquisitor. And what this does is, as you spend Holy Power, you get percent haste. And that extra haste means that you can kind of get some more cooldown reduction, you can get your uh, your glimmers up faster. You can get more holy power faster, uh, and then you build off of that. And then you also pick up Breaking Dawn, which increases the range of Light of Dawn to 40 yards. I think this one is super nice. Um, at default, it's much lower, but it means that when you're running it, uh, you can actually just build up your uh, your Light of Dawn, and it goes way further. You get some nice value out of it, and the positioning is a little bit easier. Um, so you can try this. I've been playing this uh, more than my melee build recently um, in Vaulting Incarnates. Uh, it's something there uh, if you want to try out uh, using Inquisitor and an extra haste build, especially as you get better and better gear. Lastly, let's talk about the Marauds build. This one is... <laughs> I feel like... I, I feel like it's a little troll. It's not. It's actually pretty decent. I just feel like when played properly, Holy Paladin is better played regularly, but this Murad's Dying Breath effect is quite interesting. So, Light of the Martyr is an instant cast spell that sacrifices part of your health to heal someone else. So you do a little bit of damage to yourself and you heal. It doesn't trigger Beacon of Light. So you can't cast it on yourself and, you, and it won't give you Beacon of Light. What this usually is, Light of the Martyr, is you do it uh, while you're moving, right? So if you have to move uh, and the whole raid's moving, you don't have time to cast anything, there's nothing available for instant cast, uh, if this person's in my raid and they're getting low, I will sacrifice my health to instant cast them with Light of the Martyr. As I slowly die, they slowly get healed. That's kind of your moving uh, emergency heal. However, if you run Light of the Martyr uh, and you run uh, Marauds, it means that Light of Dawn increases your next Light of the Martyr by 10% for each ally healed and allows that Light of the Martyr to heal through Beacon of Light. And the damage you take gets turned into a stagger effect or you take it over time. So it's kind of cool. Uh, it means that you can kind of build this up, uh, get a little extra there, you know, make sure you pop everything. And then when you hold it, see if I can get this on non raid targets, uh, but you pop it up, boom. Uh, and then you'll get Marauds here, which will give you a nice little bonus. And then when you, when you, uh, oh, I can't heal him. When you cast uh, this, you can see that it was while Marauds was up, it was healing me with the Beacon of Light. So it does give you some nice mobility. I still think it's inferior to the raid build. I would even say it's inferior to the caster build, but it's fun. It's fun to play if you want to do it. I wouldn't uh, do Inflorescence. You're not really going to be casting too much. It's kind of like another melee offshoot build, um, and you just run it with uh, just moving and, and building up your, uh, your, your Light of Dawn stacks and then spending that up. So if you want to try it, I'll put it down in the description. That's there for you. In general, if you're not running Marauds and you have Light of the Martyr, it's just your moving, you know, emergency renew. You just kind of keep it. If someone's in real big trouble, you don't have any big cooldowns, uh, you're going to go ahead and pop that on there. And before I forget, you also run untempered dedication. This means that as you're spamming Light of the Martyr, it stacks up its healing by 50%, and it just you know, keeps stacking up and up and up and up. So you just keep getting this stack, uh, and as you're spamming Light of the Martyr and moving, it gets higher and higher and higher until you're fully stacked, and then you can play around. So it's a nice little, like, high mobility uh, play style. Outside of that, you have just generic across all builds, 
you have some really cool effects. Uh, lay on hands, super useful. It's a seven minute cooldown, but it, it, it heals someone for 100% of your health. You can freak out, pop it. It's a really long cooldown. It does cause forbearance, which again, you can see I can't shield right now. So be careful about using forbearance on paladins or on tanks. Um, well, not lay on hands, but just on paladins in general, because sometimes you can mess them up. Um, but lay on hands is a nice one if you like, especially in Mythic Plus or in Raid when someone's really stuck. You can even, uh, if you're running Rule of Law, you can pop Rule of Law and then lay on hands them. Big bonus heal, keeps you alive. Blessing of Freedom you want to use for anyone that's slowed. Uh, you can get some other cool effects on top of it as well, but make sure you're using it. You definitely want Hammer of Wrath during Avenging Wrath. When you have wings up, you can throw out your, uh, your uh, Hammer of Wrath freely, and then you'll have procs uh, built into your tree here that allow you to use it regularly. Make sure you're using your, uh, your Divine Steed to reposition if you need to. Uh, good movement there. Another huge one is Divine Protection. This is a lifesaver. Not every healer has a damage reduction built into their kit. Certainly not one that's on a short cooldown. So Divine Protection is really nice to pick up. I even pop it sometimes uh, when I throw Sack on the tank because you take damage while the tank is taking damage. Uh, so you Sack the tank and then Divine Protection yourself uh, and then you can keep yourself alive that way. Super useful. For Aura Mastery, it's straightforward. You just pop it when the group is in trouble uh, with, your, uh, with your Devotion Aura. There's not really many options in this expansion after they change things around. You have Bop as well, if you really want it. And the last thing I'll mention is that you do have your immunity. Any class that has immunity, uh, Ice Block, Turtle, Bubble, you can clear out some effects that are much, uh, makes the raid easier. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is on Senarth when you get to the top platform, and you have those orbs everywhere that when someone jumps into them, they do a bunch of damage and explode. Uh, immune classes like Paladins can pop their bubble, and then they can run into them and pop them all without taking any damage get rid of them, clear up the space, and uh, make it feel better. So if your raid leader asks you to do that, or you're the raid leader, just make sure that you have that available, and that's Holy Paladin in Raid. If you want the Mythic Plus version, that's on my channel as well, and uh, comment down below what class I should do next, or if you're looking for PvP guides or whatever it is, let me know. I'd be happy to oblige. Thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash drive there. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content. Link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.